I had heard that you were doing some writing, and, and I thought this would be a good time to catch up. I mean, you've been spending a lot of time uh, outside of Los Angeles on yep. a mountaintop. That's right. There's a, 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 a Zen monastery that I've been uh, living at for the past four or five years. Uh, it's on Mount Baldy, about 6,500 feet up. It's full winter up there now. And you're still you're still living there now? Still up there now, yeah. Yeah, but you also keep a place in Los Angeles? Yes, I do, yeah. Uh, I'm a very bad sort of monk, and I'm too old for anybody to really care about. So they let me uh, uh, off the hook quite a, quite a few times a, a month. So it's sort of 50-50? You split your time here and there? No, I'm up there most of the time, but I get down because my, my kids are in town here, my son Adam and my daughter Lorca. Mm. So they're at a particularly interesting moment in their lives and uh, uh, they're wonderful company so I like to hang with them whenever I can well I know that Adam has been working on songs and he's finished an album that we're going to be hearing from later this hour yeah it's it's really a, a fine piece of work it's called uh, cryophilia cryophilia and it's out I think in June I think it's May Oh, maybe, maybe it's June, I don't know. Yeah, as of this morning, they, they keep changing it, I think. But, yeah. uh, it seems like either late May or early June will right. keep people posted on that. And Lorca, is she a musician at all? Is she a uh, writer? Lorca is a good poet, uh, but uh, she doesn't uh, uh, ever consider herself that. But um, she just graduated from cooking school. She was a pastry chef at Indochine. Uh, for a while, it's a, a, a good restaurant in town here. Sure, uh, she's always been interested in uh, antique furniture, and she's just um, taken over a small uh, uh, Art Deco um, furniture store on Melrose. Hmm. Well, I know that you you named her after one of your favorite poets. That's right, uh, the great Federico Garcia Lorca, and Adam. Where uh, is that from the biblical Adam? Is that yeah, just the, you know, the, he was the first one. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I, I guess you could have called Lorca Eve, but <laughs> yeah, no, just yeah. So, uh, have you um, th this writing uh, process that's been going on recently? Is it uh, part of an ongoing thing? I mean, you're always writing, aren't I'm you? I'm always scratching away, and uh, yeah, I have a lot of duties up there. I, I, I cook a lot, you know, and uh, is it a communal sort of environment? Yeah, there's about uh, 20 or 30 of us up there most times and uh, there's a lot of work to do just to keep the facility going right now there's a lot of uh, shoveling of snow and <laughs> uh, putting chains off and on your your truck <laughs> uh, what is a, a typical day in your life up there well it's a gruesome day uh, I get up at 2.30. The, the, the wake up is 3 o'clock in the morning, but I, I have to get up a half an hour early to brew a pot of coffee, otherwise I don't have a chance at the day. And then uh, I get into these absurd heavy robes and uh, go to the uh, chanting hall and there's chanting for about an hour and then there's uh, sitting in the meditation hall for a couple hours. Then there's an interview with the old teacher. He's 91 now. Then there's uh, I cook breakfast uh, for the old guy, and then there's uh, you know morning of work, afternoon of work. Uh, then again sitting in the evening. Then I cook another meal in the evening for uh, the teacher or a few monks. And then every uh, uh, fourth week. There's a uh, an intensive uh, retreat where you sit about 18 hours a day in the uh, meditation hall. Hmm. So it's it's a rigorous life, but uh, kind of interesting for you know the freaks that are up there. <laughs> well, you must find it satisfying. I mean, you've been. I don't like it very much. Uh, um, nobody really likes it. Uh, I don't think any monk really likes it. I, I remember when I was the secretary of this old teacher and we would travel to uh, Trappist monasteries and I remember speaking to uh, a monk there who'd been there 12 years and we became friendly I asked him uh, you know how's it going he said you know every morning when I wake up I've got to decide whether I want to stay or not so the, the life is designed to overthrow you uh, there are moments in the day and in the week and in the year when you really do believe that it's worthwhile 
that this study, this investigation of the self is the most important and the most urgent uh, thing in your life. And a lot of the time you feel, you know, you just like to go down the hill and, you know, light a cigarette and have a drink at a bar, which you can't do anymore. Mm. So it, it's almost like, like medicine for you then? Uh, it, you know, it's, I don't think anybody goes up there from a point of view of luxury. I certainly wasn't looking for a new religion. You know, I have a very good religion, I have a perfectly good religion. Uh, so this is not on the level of a religious conversion. It's it's a matter of undertaking a, a course of studies, a kind of investigation. And uh, if that has an urgency in your own self, if it's if it's a matter of survival, then you can do it. If it isn't a matter of survival of life and death of healing or sickness, then I don't think anyone would, would in their right mind would undertake this kind of uh, training. So since it's not a, a religious conversion of sorts, it, you would still count, couch your own beliefs in the Jewish faith? Oh, yeah, I consider myself a, 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 a Jew and a, and a Jewish practitioner. So it wasn't on the ba I wasn't looking for a new God. I was looking for a, a course of studies, a, a kind of investigation that would uh, yield the kind of information, data that uh, was urgent uh, for me. Are there any aspects of the uh, the Zen monastery teachings that you have trouble reconciling with your Jewish faith? No, no, because there's no deity, uh, there's no uh, dogma, no dogmatic philosophy, no prayerful worship. So there's nothing that would conflict with your own personal beliefs and practices and your own family traditions. It's more about yourself and your. It, it's a it's it's closer to science than religion. It's a very uh, careful and precise investigation uh, into the self and how it arises, how it's sustained, how it dissolves. The time that you've put into it um, over the years that you've been um, spending up there, do you feel that? Uh, how do you feel it's changed you as a as a person, as a, as an artist? Well, it keeps you straight with yourself. Uh, if you're sitting in a meditation hall for uh, four or five hours a day, it's um, it's very uh, difficult to maintain the um, kind of fictions about yourself that you're disposed to uh, uh, embrace. So uh, you kind of get uh, kind of get level with yourself. Do you find it inspiring uh, as a writer? Uh, has it triggered I think it's like peeling away you know the layers of the onion uh, uh, which is the process I've always used in writing anyways you know you just you keep discarding the stuff that is uh, too easy or um, uh, too much of a slogan or um, just the convenient lies so if you want to get down to the matter that you that interests you, that you're really writing about. Yeah, this kind of practice is valuable, but, you know, there's no guarantee anywhere about, you know, what results in a good song. People write great songs in the back of taxi cabs, in the midst of dissolute lives, in the midst of poverty, in the midst of riches. So there's, there's no guarantee. 